Hello, it's Scott Manley here. In the Northern Hemisphere, it is the middle of winter, and of course, it is that time of the year where we are saying Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, and of course, Happy Christmas. And along with it, all those classic songs about snow at Christmas time. I remember growing up every year hoping it would be a white Christmas. And of course, finally giving up hope when I moved to California, which seems to be the only place that has escaped the cold weather this Christmas. But being a space nerd, I wondered, is there any other place in the solar system that experiences snowfall? And the most obvious place to start is the comet uh, 67P, Churyumov Geryosmienko. Uh, these are a sequence of images taken by the Rosetta spacecraft showing what looks like a, you know, a snowstorm. Right. Now, the question is, is this really snow? Well, these are small particles getting blown off the surface of the comet. And some of these particles are mineral. Part of them are volatile. They're very likely loosely formed fluffy aggregates. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to call this a snowstorm. Now, that's pretty cool, but that stuff is falling upwards away from the comet, getting blown off into space. It would be billions of years in the past when this comet formed by particles like this aggregating onto the surface of this like a snowfall. The next obvious place to look in the solar system is Mars, and it has large polar ice caps which are visible in relatively modest telescopes. We've known about them for a long time. When von Braun was designing a mission to go to Mars, he actually had the spacecraft landing on skis at the pole because you know, he thought it would be like skiing. But over the years, we've come to understand Mars a little better. First of all, there's a lot less, you know, atmosphere than von Braun thought. But most importantly, we have established that the polar ice caps are made of water and carbon dioxide. The water ice tends to be more permanent, staying permanently situated, either north or south. But the carbon dioxide will migrate seasonally as one hemisphere is warmed and the other is cooled by the tilt of the planet. But in early 2000s, there were a couple of missions which actually observed snowfall. First of all, there was Mars Phoenix Lander. So this was, uh, it, it was basically a replacement for Mars Polar Lander, built from a bunch of spare parts. And it landed near the poles. Now, it only lasted about five months before the sun got too far south to power its uh, systems. But in that time, it was able to show that the Martian poles were hydrologically active. It dug trenches and showed that there was water under, under there, which sublimated. But... It was its LIDAR that observed the atmosphere overhead that was able to see clouds forming and then stuff falling from those clouds, which was concluded that this was, in fact, evidence of snow, specifically water snow. Now, it seems that generally, while snow can actually form anywhere on the planet under the right conditions, generally it doesn't reach the surface because the temperature rises too quickly and it sublimates before it reaches the ground. After the Phoenix lander lost contact with Earth, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter kept track of the space probe as it watched the winter progress. It saw a layer of carbon dioxide ice forming in the region of the lander and they estimated the thickness was sufficient that the mass would basically crush the solar panels on the spacecraft. And sure enough, the next time summer came around, the spacecraft did not respond. But Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter did use its sensor capabilities to observe carbon dioxide clouds and carbon dioxide snow falling uh, over the poles. So uh, the, for Mars, we actually got to see carbon dioxide snow, which isn't something we see at, on Earth. So yeah, Mars is probably the best example, and indeed the most diverse example of snow in the, the solar system, given that it has two types of snow. Now, another planet we know has liquid precipitation, and therefore potentially could have snows of some sort, frozen liquids, would be Titan. Now, so Titan is has a very complex atmosphere and hydrological cycle, but it's really based around, um, you know, methane and ethane hydrocarbons instead of water. But it's sufficiently complicated that there's very likely regions in the atmosphere where some of, of these actually form into solids and create snows. Titan is very cold, and so most of the surface is believed to actually be ice, water ice. 
you know, if you're working in planetology, you very quickly realize that the conditions over most of the universe are such that water shouldn't be considered a liquid, but should be considered a mineral. Now, if you want to find snows elsewhere in the solar system, there's a few examples, but you kind of have to expand your definition as to what it is. If you consider it to be frozen water falling from the sky and forming deposits on the surface, well, there's a place for that. Enceladus doesn't have enough atmosphere to support clouds and precipitation from them. What it does have is a set of geysers which are known to throw water into space which crystallizes and falls back very slowly onto Enceladus. So this is rather more like a snow cannon, a snowmaker that you might find at a ski resort that's blowing water into the air and having it freeze out so that they can have, you know, great skiing. Uh, now, what's interesting, I guess, about this is that it actually blows it out enough that it forms one of the rings around Saturn. The E-ring, which is appropriate because it's formed by Enceladus, is the most out the outermost ring of Saturn. It's a very like indistinct, smeared out ring, but the particles in this spread out and they actually cross into orbits of other nearby moons, specifically Mimas and Tethys and Dione. All of these uh, moons are observed to have an enhancement in their radar reflectivity, which it's believed that what happens is snow is being formed at Enceladus and eventually finds its way to these other moons and forms this, you know, this very loosely packed dielectric surface, which is a great radio reflector. So not only can you have snow in space, you can have snow that comes from other celestial bodies. But as I said, this is sort of crossing over from, you know, atmospheric type snowfalls to something where you've basically got a, a spray of liquid shooting out into space and then falling back as a solid. And you know what? We have something like that on Earth. They're called volcanoes. In that case, it's not so much uh, rain that's falling, it's a rain of molten magma that will turn into volcanic ash or other, uh, you know, deposited minerals. So if we allow Enceladus geysers, then we have to allow Io's, you know, volcanoes, right? They're basically throwing out all sorts of interesting minerals, sulfur-rich, and they do form into sort of, uh, um, they will form into like amorphous, you know, structures a little like snowflakes. And these will fall back to Io, and that explains why you've got such a variation in color of this uh, this moon. Uh, yeah, Io, it does actually make yellow snow, apparently. And if we let the temperature range go in the other direction, we can head out to Triton. This is the most distant object visited by Voyager 2. It's a moon of Neptune, and it is large enough that its surface is water, frozen water, as hard as steel, but underneath that there are geysers, which aren't propelled by boiling water. No, they're propelled by nitrogen turning from liquid into a gas and spraying out debris, which you know freezes and then falls back onto the surface and leaves trails. These have only ever been observed by Voyager 2 on a single fly pass, so they didn't have a chance to go back and look for new details. It would be great to have another mission go out to these icy worlds on the edge of the solar system. Similarly, New Horizons is the only spacecraft to visit Pluto, and one of the more uh, well, interesting or discussed features was the, the observation that it looked like many of the peaks had snow caps on them, white, you know, peaks on top of them. So, sure, it looked like classic snow capped mountains on Earth, but this was a completely different mechanism according to current research. What the white areas are believed to be, I think, is uh, methane frost. And the formation mechanism is completely different, right? On Earth, you get, you know, snow forming on peaks because as the air rises, it gets colder and it rains out deposits on the top of peaks. But on Pluto, the atmosphere is actually warmer than the surface because it's getting warmed by the sun. And it, I think the simulations basically say that what happens is at the top of these, the methane from the atmosphere freezes and sticks to the top and the gas on being cooled by this glides down the slope and but by the time it gets to the bottom it's lost the methane so that's what's producing these white features on the top at least according to this one paper based on this one spacecraft
Now moving from one of the coldest places in the solar system to one of the hottest, Venus. Now Venus has a fairly significant atmosphere and it does have weather of sorts. I'm sure it's actually entirely possible that snow or precipitation forms in the very upper atmosphere, but down near the surface there's evidence of a frost type activity. Venus was most recently mapped by the Magellan spacecraft, which launched from the space shuttle in 1989, and it used synthetic aperture radar to peer beneath the clouds. And this is a kind of relief map that was produced, where you can sort of get an idea of the different terrain heights from this image. Now, if you overlay the albedo map, which shows which areas had the highest radar reflectivity, it becomes obvious that the highest places have the highest reflectivity, and it's believed that this is due to some sort of mineral that is like deposited by the atmosphere, like in a frost-type mechanism. At higher altitudes, the material gets deposited in a different way, and so we get better reflectivity. At one point, it was believed that this was due to tellurium, uh, and there have been a few other heavy metal frosts that have been uh, suggested, but no one has got a definitive answer just yet as to what causes this phenomena. So while the solar system does provide a huge range of chemistries and physical mechanisms which can produce snow, I'm pretty sure that the planet Earth is going to continue to offer the best winter sports destinations for a long time to come. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.